Welcome to the Virtual College Fair for all Virginia students, sponsored by the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Counselors and StriveScan. Uh, before we start with our presentations this evening, just a few quick housekeeping items. Uh, the first is that uh, you are encouraged to ask questions to any of our panelists, and you can do so using the Q&A button. If you have a question for a specific school, please put that school or abbreviation in your question. Uh, you're also welcome to ask general questions of all of our panelists. As this is a webinar, your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. And just a reminder, you are welcome to sign up for additional sessions either later this evening or next week, there'll be some Virginia panel sessions. And about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on the same registration website. But without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our first panelist, uh, which will be Mount St. Mary's. All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Katie Smile. I'm an admissions counselor here at Mount St. Mary's University in Emmitsburg, Maryland. I'm also a proud Mount alum. I graduated in 2020, so not too long ago. Um, but for time's sake, we'll just go ahead and jump right into things. So the Mount was founded in 1808 by Father John Dubois when he fled the French Revolution. So he actually went down to Virginia first, um, then made his way up to Maryland, where he founded our university. So we have 212 years of Catholic tradition. Now, um, we are a Catholic university. You are at no point ever required to attend Mass here. However, if you are Catholic and you would like to attend Mass, um, you can attend Mass uh, daily in one of our six chapels on campus. Um, but let's go over some demographics. So we are a relatively small university. We come in at just under 2,000 students at 1,898. Um, we are 50-50 male, female. And while we're small, we represent people from 44 states and 37 countries. So we're kind of all over the map, which is nice. Um, and that number down at the bottom, uh, you'll see 68% of our students live on campus all four years. Housing is guaranteed for students all four years. We are not a com commuter university. Um, students love being on campus because we have a very active student life, which is awesome. So we have over 70 plus majors and minors. Um, I like to tell students that our curriculum is divided into three different parts. About a third of it is dedicated to our core curriculum. About a third is dedicated to your major and about a third of it is dedicated to some flex room. So we don't expect you guys to come into the Mount knowing exactly what you wanna do. We want you to discover that here. So that flex room really allows you some opportunity to try a couple of philosophy classes, try some business classes, um, see what you like, see what sticks and then go from there. So you have two years to declare a major once you come into the university. Now, again, we are a relatively small school, so our average class size is 18 students. Um, the biggest class size that you're really going to have is probably going to be no more than 25 students, and those are going to be your classes that you're going to take um, your first year, your general education classes. Um, but definitely there are benefits to attending a small school. One of those benefits is that 76% of our students will do an internship. So we really encourage students to get involved in their student life, make connections. You're assigned an academic advisor all four years while you're here. And that is gonna be someone who's just gonna help you set up your classes and really encourage you to get involved um, either whether it be internally within our campus activities or outside of campus and do an internship. Um, and we really like to say that's important because employers love when they see experience Experience on your resume, um, which is great. And that's why we think we're number one in Maryland for employment after college. Now, a big question I get from students is what is there to do on the Mount campus? So we recognize that we are not located in a college town. Um, we're about an hour outside of Baltimore and Washington. And then our neighboring towns are Gettysburg, which is about 15 minutes north of us, and Frederick, which is about 25 minutes south. But the Mount does a really good job making sure there's never a boring moment on our campus. So we have over 70 clubs and organizations. Um, we have our activities management program, which runs our big school wide scavenger hunts. We have our Tiki Fest, which is our one of our school dances, one of our many school dances. I know everyone's thinking, oh my gosh, another school dance. Um, this is not fun. Well, our school dances are a ton of fun. We have DJs come in, they go to like one o'clock in the morning. All of our undergraduate population goes and they're a good time for all of our students. Um, we have our outdoor adventures club, which has never been <laughs> more popular. Um, they do trips, hiking, uh, kayaking, canoeing, rock climbing, and we definitely take advantage of where we're located in the mountains. 
Now on top of that, we are a division one school. So we have 24 NCAA division one sports and our arenas, they will sell out. Um, our basketball arenas will sell out. A big incentive for students to go to the games is with free food. We love food here at the Mount. So we'll do free Chick-fil-A nights, free Chipotle nights. Um, so if you do not want to eat at the dining hall one night, there are other options. We do have a food truck on campus too, which is really nice. Um, students love all the food options that we have. Now, of course, if you are passionate about a sport and you don't want to play at the Division One level, we have options for you. So we have 13 club sports and 17 intramural sports. Um, club sports are Mount uh, students competing against other universities, and intramural sports are Mount students competing against other Mount students, which are equally as competitive. Now, other ways you can get involved, 75% um, of our students will complete service here at the Mount. Um, we partner up with Habitat for Humanity, and um, we do lots of things within our uh, community here in Emmitsburg. And again, all these things I'm mentioning, great ways to get involved, um, great ways to get leadership experience on your resume, and 30% of our students will hold some type of leadership experience. Um, so let's talk about some of the scholarships that we offer. Now you'll write, uh, you'll see here that these are our scholarships from last year. There is a big change in our scholarships. Um, so now every student is awarded anywhere from twenty thousand to twenty nine thousand um, dollars off their tuition. Awarded one of these merit scholarships, so it's quite the jump um, from this year to last year, which is nice. Our average financial aid package is around thirty thousand um, dollars, and you can um, apply for other scholarships through athletics. We do have an ROTC program here or our founder scholarship which is um, one student is awarded a full tuition scholarship. Now some important dates and uh, required application pieces. So um, we need two things from you when you go to apply. There are two ways to apply. So you can either go online to our university app at msmary.edu slash apply or we are in the common app. Um, and there's two things we're going to need. A copy of your high school transcript and at least one layer of recommendation from a guidance counselor or a teacher. Um, now, we are a test optional school. We don't require ACT, SAT scores, um, but I also encourage students, if you're above the averages, to submit those. Um, and then also a, a personal statement or a resume is another great option, op optional piece for students to submit, and I highly recommend you doing that. Um, now, we are open for visits, and we would love you guys to come and visit us, tour our campus. If you're feeling Zoomed out, um, definitely come give us a visit, and thank you very much. Thank you, Mount St. Mary's. Up next this evening will be Averett University. Hello. All right. Um, I am Mari Walker, and I am representing Averett University. On this slide here, you see um, different activities um, that have happened on campus from game days um, to um, play to engage days, um, certain students getting involved with their majors, such as sports broadcasting, and us giving back to um, the community as well. Um, you may ask, who is Avery University? If you've never heard of us, we are a suburban campus. We have a total of five different campuses in Danville, Virginia. Um, a total of 965 traditional undergraduate students. We have a 50-50 um, male to female population represented on campus, a 33% diversity rate, as well as an 11% international population. Um, our average class sizes here are anywhere from 10 to 12 students in your average class. The largest class you may have is 24 students. So your professors know you um, by name and face basis. Um, Danville, Virginia is located in Southern Virginia in the heart of the Energetic River District, uh, where community um, diverse in culture, arts and entertainment and lifestyles. Um, our community prides itself in activity and service. You will find just as many opportunities to be involved in our community as you will find things to do. Um, we look forward to um, students and prospective students joining the Averitt family. Um, student life here at Avert is, they call themselves SECT, um, Student Engagement Team. Their whole motto is be apart from the start. Um, they have about 30 plus clubs and organizations and intramural sports. You actually can start your own club or organization if you come to campus and we already do not have it. You just need three people and an advisor to um, start it. We believe in service-based student body. Um, we have a department called the CCECC. -E -C -C 
which is the Center for Community Engagement and Career Competitiveness. Um, so definitely if you're looking to volunteer, get some hours done, or if you're looking for a on-campus job, or if you're looking for an internship, the CCECC is the place to go to find these opportunities. Here are a list of our majors and minors. Um, I can tell you our number one um, most popular major is physical education, only because we have a big athletic presence here on campus and athletes tend to want to keep doing what they already love to do. Um, aeronautics is a big one for us as well as business administration, um, education and nursing are um, some of our top majors as well. We have 16 NCAA Division III athletic teams. Um, we also have competition dance and cheer. We also have varsity esports, as well as competitive IBA and IHSA equestrian teams and an NIFA flight team. Um, so these interest you definitely um, reach out to us as well. You may ask, well, how do I apply? You can go on the website to apply. There is no essay and no fee, completely free. And we are rolling admissions. So anytime you want to apply, feel free to. Um, we have always been the test optional school, so definitely in the heat of everything going on, if you just submit your transcripts, we can get the process going with just your transcripts. Um, but if you do have test scores, we will take them as well. We ask that you go online and look at the virtual tour, even if you aren't able to make it to campus, just so you will be able to see the feel of campus. Okay. Um, financial aid, we have merit scholarships. They range anywhere from eighteen dollars to $3,000 per year. Um, we have AVID assistance. So after you complete your FAFSA, you'll be able to um, receive AVID assistance as well as being a Virginia resident getting that VTAG. Um, we ask that you do come on campus and visit. We have Scholarship Day, which is November 14th, will be a virtual event. Um, Cougar Preview Day, which is November the 18th. Um, if you're actually able to join us on that day, you'll be able to receive a visit grant as well for just attending that day. Um, you can come on campus and visit Monday through Friday. The times are 9 a.m., 11 a.m., 1 p.m., and 3 p.m. Just go online, um, register, and you'll receive a confirmation email. You can follow us on social media as well, um, Instagram account, Twitter. Go look at our virtual tour as well, or just browse the website just so you can get a feel of Ava as a whole and maybe um, find some interest in some things. And again, I tell you, welcome to Avery University, and hopefully we'll be able to see you next year or see you on campus. Thank you. Thank you, Avery. Um, up next this evening is West Virginia University Institute of Technology. Hi, everybody. My name is Ashley, and I'm an admissions counselor here at WVU Tech. Uh, we are a part of the WVU system. So if you've heard of West Virginia University, we are a branch campus of them. We're located in Southern West Virginia. We have around 1700 students here. And you can just see from the map of West Virginia um, where we're located. And it's also very easy to go in between the campuses here. So if you wanna do a few years at one campus and a few years at the other, that's very easy to do. And then this picture here is of our campus here in Beckley. You can see we're a very small campus, but that's pretty good for us because everybody knows everybody on campus. A little bit of background of the city of Beckley. Um, we're the ninth largest city in West Virginia and the campus was located in the heart of downtown Beckley. So right across from some of our classroom space, we have um, the city hall, we have a lawyer's office in town, so our students kind of intermingle with everybody in town. Our school itself was founded in 1895, and we have two academic colleges here on campus. We have the College of Business, Humanities, and Social Sciences, as well as the Leonard C. Nelson College of Engineering and Sciences. We have over 35 academic programs here, and our student-to-faculty ratio is 12 to 1. Uh, class size here is pretty small, uh, around 17 students in class. And then we have 18 A NAIA athletic teams. <clears throat> Here's a list of just some of our achievements here on campus. Our annual increase in enrollment has been going up ever since 2012. And we have nine ABED accredited engineering programs here on campus. 
that just means that they have all of our engineering programs have the gold seal of approval. And we are also number one in West Virginia for student return on investment. So that basically means once our graduates leave us, they go out and they're able to find jobs in the field that they studied. Here's just a list of some of our programs of study here on campus. So we have everything from accounting and chemistry to all of our engineering programs. We also have a new program on campus. It's through our WVU Kaiser campus, but it's here on our Beckley campus. It's the hospitality and culinary program, which is the only two year program that's on our campus right now. We also provide the pre-professional tracks on campus. So pre-med, pre-pharmacy, pre-vet and pre-dental, those could be chemistry or biology degrees and pre-law can basically, basically be any degree that you would like to choose. On campus housing, we have two residence halls. We have Hogan Hall and University. They're both set up as four person suites. Um, University actually has it set up to where everybody in the suite has their own bedroom and then there's two bathrooms in the suite as well. And our dining services on campus are buffet style dining. And we also have what we call the tech spot. So we have a Starbucks on campus that's located in there and it's also kind of our grab and go area. So if you're in a rush in between classes, you can go there and grab a sandwich or a snack and then head on to class. We have over 40 student organizations on campus. So we have a lot that are academic based like our psychology and biology clubs. Um, we also have the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. They go out and race the Baja buggy that we um, our students build on campus. And they also take out the concrete canoe that we build on campus. And then we have social organizations on campus like the SGA, which is our Student Government Association and Tech Alliance. We are located in Southern West Virginia, which means outdoor recreation is basically in our backyard. Um, you can go skiing, hiking, camping, rafting, and all that's basically within a 30 minute drive from campus. Our 18 NAIA athletic teams are listed here. Our newest one is eSports, which is currently, I think, undefeated. And they're actually the team that our homecoming is gonna be based around this year. So we get to watch them play. Here on our campus, service and learning is a big part. Um, we have different opportunities for our students to serve the community. We have the uh, orientation projects that they do their first week that they're here on campus, as well as the Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service. We are gonna be test optional for the spring and the fall next year. However, um, you can mark that you're gonna be test optional on the application, but if you're applying for an engineering or a nursing program, we will need your test scores in order to be in that program. Financial aid here on campus is basically very easily explained on our website. Um, scholarship information is listed on there as well. Um, we do award merit-based scholarships based on your GPA and your test scores. And if you all have any questions, feel free to contact me. Here's my email address and my phone number as well. Thank you. Thank you, WVU Tech. Uh, moving into the second half of our presentations, uh, up next is Virginia Tech. Hi, everybody. My name is Taylor Brown. I am an admissions counselor for Virginia Tech's Office of Undergraduate Admissions. And I'll start off just by sharing a little bit about our institution. We are located in Blacksburg, Virginia. Um, which is in the southwestern region of the state, as you can see on the map. Um, we are right in the middle of the Blue Ridge Mountains. So as you can see in the aerial shot, we have outdoor adventure opportunities galore right at our backyard. Um, so if you're interested in backpacking, kayaking, hiking, any of those opportunities, they're right there at your fingertips on our campus. In the event that that's not really your thing, that's totally fine. Um, it's still a really scenic place to live and study for four years. And additionally, we also have a main street of the town of Blacksburg that backs right up to our campus. It has all of our local restaurants, coffee shops, um, as well as things you know and love like um, Chipotle, Starbucks, all within walking distance. Um, the campus itself is 
very walkable, although it is a larger campus. We have about 37,000 students on our campus with 30,000 of those students being undergraduates, um, but still very walkable, very accessible for our students. Um, there is a bus system that you can um, access if you wish, but again, you can still easily walk from one building to the other. So um, definitely Blacksburg is a smaller town. Um, it's almost synonymous with Virginia Tech. When people think about Blacksburg, they think Virginia Tech, Virginia Tech, they think about Blacksburg. So um, it definitely gives you that quintessential college feel. Now, this phrase, ut prosum, is Latin for that I may serve. Um, service is something that's been a part of our identity since we were established as an institution. We were originally a military institute. Um, over the years, though, that spirit of ut prosum is still something that our students embody to this day um, in their day-to-day -day activities on campus, whether that's through um, undergraduate research opportunities, through any of our clubs and organizations, or through our Corps of Cadets, our students are focused on that spirit of giving back, whether it's to the local Blacksburg community, um, to the greater state of Virginia, to the nation, or even a global perspective. It's something that um, is definitely at the forefront of every student, staff, and faculty member's mind. Hokie Nation, um, that is our campus community. We are the Hokies at Virginia Tech. Hokie Bird is our mascot. You saw Hokie Bird on that first slide. Um, we have a very enriched experience for our students by attracting students from all different walks of life on our college campus. Um, like I mentioned earlier, it is a larger, larger campus community. Um, so when you think about our total student population of around 37,000 students compared to the city of Blacksburg that has about 45,000 different um, uh, inhabitants. It's something that um, definitely stands out as a college town experience. And so we have about 41 different states represented on our campus, 90, over 90 different countries represented in our student body as well. So um, we guarantee that you're going to meet students from all different walks of life um, and you're going to find um, that Hokie Nation is a place where you can get involved in so many different ways through any of our 900 plus um, student organizations um, or um, fostering some school spirit through um, our D1 athletic programs. We are a part of the Atlantic Coastal Conference and we actually um, have been registered on a Richter scale before due to our students um, joining in and jumping to enter Sandman at Lane Stadium. So if you're looking for some school pride, we certainly have it um, amongst our campus community in Hokie Nation. Now, I think when people hear um, our name, Virginia Tech, they think more of that tech focus, those STEM majors, and we certainly have those. We're certainly well known for those, but we're a comprehensive university. So we have, you know, everything from agriculture to um, liberal arts, to business, to architecture, um, to public health, you name it. Um, we have over a hundred different areas of study for our students to choose from when selecting that major. And we do have a few different ways to apply to our institution, either through coalition or the common app. Um, either application is fine. We really don't have a preference on either one. It's totally um, for whatever works best for you. And just a little bit of um, percentage points and significant statistics on why uh, Virginia Tech should be an option for you. Um, we have an 83% graduation rate. That's well above the national average. We also have 82% of our students that are employed um, within six months of graduation or continuing their education. And coupled with that, they're usually having about a $60,000 average salary. Um, so our young alums are proud of all that hard work and definitely want us to share that. And in addition, um, this is probably my favorite. Our retention rate is 93%. This is also well above the national average. So um, retention is when you complete your freshman year, you spend your summer and you return to campus your sophomore year. Um, so this tells me that students are really um, happy being a part of Hokie Nation. They're finding their home on campus and they're investing in those relationships and returning to them year after year. So just a significant point when considering um, Virginia Tech as one of your potential options when considering um, continuing your education. And just to wrap things up, um, we are only doing virtual experiences right now due to the implications of COVID-19. Please feel free to register for one of our daily information sessions. They're hosted Monday through Friday at a variety of times. Um, so that way you can work around your class schedules or work schedules or whatever the case may be. Additionally, please follow us on um, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. That's a great way to stay up to speed with what we've got going on. But thanks again for joining me this evening and go Hokies. Virginia Tech. 
Up next this evening will be St. Vincent College. All right, thank you. My name is Melissa Sobek. I'm the Associate Director at St. Vincent College. And if after my presentation, you're interested in learning more about our opportunities, please text SVC to the number you see on your screen, 724-221-3363, so you can stay up to date um, with all of our events and scholarship opportunities available to you. So St. Vincent College, who are we? Um, first, let's say, where are we? We're located in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, um, which is about an hour drive from Pittsburgh. Um, and you're looking up on your screen some of the um, travel times to get to St. Vincent. So if you're looking for a college that's a little bit more of a distance, um, want to get away, um, then we're your place. Um, we also offer travel reimbursement. If you would like to come and visit St. Vincent, um, please just call our office and we will give you more details on how to arrange your visit. Okay, so St. Vincent College, obviously, Saint, we are Catholic, but Catholic by invitation. We invite people of all faiths and no faiths to attend our institution. We do not push our views on anyone. Um, if that is important to you, then the Catholicism is there. If not, um, you don't have to go to church or anything like that. Um, we do require three religion courses. The first one's a basic world religions class. The next two, you get to pick the remaining years that you're at St. Vincent, and they can be on all different faiths. Um, we have classes taught by a Jewish rabbi, um, classes taught by a Protestant reverend, and we have many classes that students like to take that involve the past presidents and their religious beliefs. But we offer over 50 majors in the liberal arts, sciences, and business. Some of our more popular programs are biology, uh, pre-med and the allied health track, business administration, computer science, criminology, education, and psychology, to name a few. Our criminology program is ranked number two in the state of Pennsylvania and in the top 25 in the nation. We are a smaller college, 1,500 total enrolled. Um, we have 120 full-time faculty, giving you 11 to one student faculty ratio. So there is no way that you can hide in a classroom at St. Vincent, the faculty will get to know you. But we like that because they invest in you and wanna make sure that you're being successful in the classroom and that you're prepared to go on to your career or graduate school or whatever your future may hold. So for sports, we are the St. Vincent Bearcats. We are NCAA Division III. We compete in the President's Athletic Conference. We offer 13 varsity sports for men and 12 for women. If you're interested in playing the sport at St. Vincent, you can go to the website you're seeing on your screen, www.stvincent.edu forward slash athletics, and you can send a message to the coach so you can learn more about the expectations of the program. So our application requirements, um, quickest and easiest way to apply is right online at our website. We also accept the common application. So if you're looking at a number of schools, that may be a good option for you. Um, for your application to go under review, we will need your official transcripts so you can request from your counseling department. And if you have test scores available, we will take those. If not, we are also test optional and you can learn more about that online as well. We offer many academic scholarships and grants, up to $28,500 per year for academic scholarships, also a $3,000 resident grant. And most of you, well, all of you are probably out of state that are listening. So we offer a $500 out of state grant and there could be more to that depending on your need if you complete the FAFSA for free application for federal student aid. We also offer every year a Wimmer scholarship competition for a full tuition scholarship that would cover um, your room and board as well for the top winner. This year it'll be offered on December 5th. There will be um, a virtual option as well. Um, and then the second through fifth place winners will receive full tuition. So it's a general competitive exam, hits all areas, subject areas you've had in high school. No way to study or prepare for it, but you have nothing to lose. So why not try it out? Um, and then many additional needs based grants are available as well. Uh, just some professional school acceptances. We have 100% placement into law school, 81% um, um, acceptance into medical school. That's 30% above the national average. And 98% of our 2019 graduates are employed or furthering their education within a year of graduating from St. Vincent. 
We are also taking in-person visits. So please, if you are in the area and would like to travel to Pennsylvania, you can schedule your visit online. Um, pick the best date and time that is available for you. Um, but we're also offering virtual visits. So if you do not feel comfortable um, walking around campus due to the pandemic, you can arrange a virtual visit with your personal admission counselor and then take a tour um, in real time with one of our current students and who best to learn about a college is from the students that are attending the institution themselves and they can let you know you know what they like about the school and why they decided um, to come to St. Vincent. We just ask you allow about two weeks to arrange your visit. Uh, again you can go right here to the website www.stvincent.edu forward slash visit to schedule and your personal admission counselor for Virginia his name is Zachary Romaley. Um, if you'd like to take a screenshot of his information that's appearing on the screen please do. His email is there as well as our general website and if you need to send any additional information to us if you're applying go to admission at stvincent.edu and our phone number is 724-805-2500. Thanks for your time and we hope that you decide to apply. St. Vincent uh, and our final presenter this evening will be Eckerd College. Hello, thank you. Um, so my name is Philip Roberts. I'm admissions counselor here at Eckerd and I'll just spend the um, next couple minutes kind of discussing some of the unique features at Eckerd. Um, but we are a small private liberal arts and sciences college located in St. Petersburg, Florida. So just south of Tampa. And we have just under 2000 students on our campus. So I'll go over some more unique aspects. One of which is our autumn term experience. To fully understand that though, there are two important features to understand. One is the geographic reach of our students. So we are 80% represented out of state, which isn't as typical for Florida schools. And um, on average, our students are traveling over a thousand miles to come to our campus. Nationally, students travel typically closer to 200 miles. So our students definitely are looking to go further away from home. And typically they're the only student coming from their graduating class. So for the most of our students are coming far from home and don't know anyone else on campus when they arrive. Also important to understand our academic calendar. So we have a 414 calendar, which means you take four classes in the fall, four classes in the spring, and then we have a short term requirement, which is where you take uh, one class over the period of three weeks. Our sophomore through seniors do that with our winter term, which is three weeks in January. However, as for our first year students, they fulfill that requirement with our autumn term. So they're in they arrive to campus three weeks before the fall semester starts. And this is sort of like a three week long orientation program, but you are also taking a class during this time. So you're in class Monday through Friday, nine to 12. And that is really there is to help with that transition from high school to college to really make sure you understand the differences between a high school classroom and a college classroom, and that you feel comfortable when you start your classes in the fall. And then the afternoons, you're doing orientation type activities where you're getting to know one another, but you're also really getting to know the different departments on campus, getting to know the different resources available to you, and giving yourself that time to adjust to being in a new environment, to living in Florida, it's a very different world from the rest of the country, and time to really get to know the rest of your classmates so that when you start in the fall, you're more confident with being a college student. We do offer over 40 different majors at Eckerd College. Um, our top major though, number one is our marine science program. We are one of the top programs in the country. But then our animal studies, our environmental studies, our international relations, and our psychology are other top programs. But as you can see, we have a wide variety of different programs all across academic disciplines, as well as a handful of pre-professional tracks that students can partake in. Some unique features on our own campus, uh, two of which you can see in this photo. One, due to that location, we are right on the Gulf of Mexico. We do have our own private beaches. Wi-Fi does extend to the beach, so students do have the opportunity to do their homework on the beach. Um, there are bonfires set up that students, the RAs can help you create a campfire. They have s'mores kits, a lot of fun that our students definitely utilize that. Another unique feature that you can see in this photo is the dog. So we are the pet friendliest campus in America. So students can bring their pets to campus as long as they are 45 pounds and under and not classified an exotic animal. So not all dogs, but we do still have plenty of dogs on campus. Um, and they're truly integrated into our campus life. There are loads of different events and traditions for them throughout the year. My personal favorite is pet graduation. So a couple of days before the humans graduate, the pets of our graduating seniors get their own graduation ceremony 
um, where they give in a mini certificate, they get caps and gowns. It's very adorable, one of my favorite times of the year. A unique feature of our campus life is our waterfront, which has three components to it. One is the academic, so students in our marine science and our environmental studies classes will take out boats, go out to the bay, collect samples, be back in the labs all within one class period um, due to that location. Two is recreational for free as a student. You can take out kayaks, paddle boards, canoes, um, fishing gear. You can go wakeboarding, water skiing, sailing, a wide variety of water sport activities all for free as a student. And then the third component is a service. So we have an organization called Eckerd College Search and Rescue. We are the only collegiate organization in the country that works with the National Coast Guard. So our students are fully trained to respond to calls out in the bay and uh, due to our location, they're quite often first on scene and they are equipped to respond right away. They don't need to wait for the Coast Guard. They're not shadowing them. They're fully trained. Um, and as I said, we're the only college in the country that works with the Coast Guard. And on average, our students are responding to just over 500 calls in an academic year. So definitely keeping busy and very proud of that work with them. Some application stuff, students can apply through the Common App or on our Eckerd application. No preference either way, whatever is easiest for you. And then we just need your official high school transcript. So our average GPA is a 3.45 unweighted. Uh, your test scores are an optional for the next two years in light of everything happening with COVID. So it's completely up to you if you would like to submit those for consideration for your application. Uh, you are still eligible for our merit aid without those. So our merit aid runs from 12 to 25,000 and that'll be based off of GPA for these next two years as we are being test optional. But if you would like to submit your test scores, you can go ahead and do so. Our average SAT is 1200 and the average ACT is a 26. Then we need one letter of recommendation from an academic source. So that's either a teacher or a counselor. And then the personal essay. Two timelines to apply, early action, which is if you apply by November 15th, guaranteed decision mailed by December 15th, and you can get the application fee waived. This is non-binding. You still have until May 1st to make your decision. Just gives you a little bit more time to do so. And then um, after which we go into rolling decision, which is three to five weeks of your application being complete you'll receive your admissions decision. And finally, we just like to end uh, pointing out this colleges that change lives and this quote saying Eckerd College might seem like the perfect spot for an easy college career. Well, we is not by sun, surf and sand, but if you're looking for a vacation, you should know elsewhere. Obviously spent time talking about our beaches and the waterfront, but academics are just so important and our students are finding that balance in their lives. Please feel free to reach out if you have further questions. Great. Thank you very much, Eckerd, and thank you to all of our panelists. We do have some time remaining, so attendees, you are welcome to pose any questions that may have come up during the presentations to our panelists. Uh, while we're waiting to see what questions come up, uh, why don't I pose the following question to all of you? Uh, perhaps you could share uh, one thing that you did not have time to include in your presentation that you'd like to share with our group, uh, whether that be an event or tradition on campus, your favorite part of campus, a unique club, et cetera, or uh, what's a frequently asked question that you receive that you'd like to address with everybody. Um, so we can go in the same order. So why don't we start with uh, Mount St. Mary's. So something I would like to share is my favorite mount tradition here, and I think a lot of students can vouch that is also their favorite mount tradition. Um, but every year we have a big um, crab feast as part of our family fest. It's the first weekend of school. Um, it's all you can eat, five dollar crab feast. Now for our Maryland, us Maryland folks up here, we love blue crabs. Um, and I can I think most people from our state come and try them and they absolutely love it. But it's an all you can eat five dollar crab feast happens every year. Um, your parents, siblings can come, uh, pretty much the whole school goes. So it's a lot of fun. Good time. <laughs> thank you. Great, thank you. Um, Avery. Um, two favorite traditions that I love here at Avery. Um, one is late night breakfast. We have late night breakfast every time during exam time. Um, so you'll be able to go in and the calf stays open late so you can have late night breakfast. Number two tradition is when you're a freshman here, you are able to have dinner at the president's house. Um, it's in small groups, but she's asking you questions so you can give her feedback. So she gets to know you on a personal level and you just not knowing who your president is. So maybe if you attend, you'll be able to attend at the president's house. 
Great, thank you. Uh, WVU Tech. My favorite event on campus is our Light Up Tech event. Basically, it's a couple of weeks before uh, winter break and you get to come, they turn on all the Christmas lights and everything. You get to have cookies, hot chocolate, and they do an ugly sweater contest, so. I'll go. I'll go for it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Virginia Tech. So one of my favorite um, campus traditions is an event that takes place in the spring semester. It's known as the big event. It's a student-led event where everybody gathers on the drill field, which is like a large quad space on campus. And students split up into different groups to go out into the New River Valley community to complete different service projects for local businesses, organizations, um, and families um, that are residing in the Christiansburg and Blacksburg area. So um, again, Uprosum service is something that's super important to us. And so I think that does an excellent job of carrying out that tradition. Okay, thank you. St. Vincent? Um, I have two favorites as well. Um, Wimmerfest, um, named after our founder of the college, Boniface Wimmer. Um, it's usually right before Thanksgiving break where we honor the founder. We have a huge, I guess, pre-Thanksgiving dinner for our students. Um, and then afterwards we have fireworks and also that is when we light up our campus as well uh, for the holidays. And second, um, Latrobe is the inventor of the banana split Sunday. Uh, so every spring we have a huge carnival and obviously we have been in the splits that we offer and also just some fun activities, rides, games for the students um, to have fun at the college. Hey, thank you. And Eckert College? Um, well, I'd have to say pet graduation is probably my favorite, but I already mentioned that. Um, the Catholic Car Carnival is also a great one. Every spring um, out on our huge field, a carnival is set up with carnival rides and food and canned foods. It's just a great day that everyone can spend together. Great, thank you. Um, we did have a question come in uh, that was posed to Virginia Tech, but might be a good question for everybody to quickly address in our last few minutes. Um, the question was, uh, when do you need to declare a major and what help do you get if you are undecided when entering? Um, so why don't we quickly go around and address that if you all want, uh, starting with Mount St. Mary's. Yeah, so that's a popular question we get. Um, at the Mount, you don't have to declare a major until the end of your sophomore year. So everybody comes in actually undecided. Um, and that's part of the reason every student is enrolled in our core curriculum where you take general education classes and they really help you um, decide which major you would like to go down, which career path you would like to follow. So um, yeah, to answer your question, end of sophomore year when you need to declare a major. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Averitt? Um, at Averitt, things are a little different. If you are planning on doing nursing or education or aeronautics, um, those are majors we ask that you declare coming in as a freshman. Um, the rest of your majors, even if you're undecided, but if you do know your major, what you're going to do, you start taking some of your major classes your very first year as a freshman. Um, because we want you to know upfront, um, out the gate, hey, I like this, or maybe I don't, maybe I want to change something else, or maybe something else will interest me, so that year three and four, you're not down the road and like, oh my God, I completely hate my major and I want to change it. Um, so we give it to you in the beginning so you can kind of write your own path. Thank you. Okay, thank you. WVU Tech. Um, here at Tech, you basically have a year to declare your major. And then our Student Success Center will actually help you walk through the whole process and figure out what you want to do. Um, we offer a test on campus that you can take before you start your fall semester, and it actually kind of helps narrow it down so you can kind of see what you're going to be good at. Okay, thank you. Uh, Virginia Tech? Yeah, so I addressed the question in the chat, but I do want to add, we do have an undecided major included in our list of majors for students to consider. So that's an option for our students. Um, and then I also just encourage my students in general to spend some time just having some um, reflective, you know, um, thoughts and, and conversations with teachers, family members, guardians um, about maybe their academic interests. And I'm happy to have those conversations with students as well in the event that maybe you're stuck between two majors or you truly just don't really have a, a direction at this point in time. But we do ask students to declare um, a major on their application when applying to our institution. Great, thank you. St. Vincent? 
Yes, um, usually you don't have to declare your major into the end of your sophomore year for the exception um, for nursing, though, you would have to declare that right away and as well as education. But if you're undecided, you will have an academic advisor who will help you decide your path that you would like to take. Great, thank you. And Same thing, all of our students come in undeclared um, and they can start declaring it the spring of their first year. Um, for those who are undecided, that's where the autumn term experience really helps. You get a one-on-one -on -one meeting with your mentor and they start to figure out what would be good classes for you to figure out what you might be interested in. Great, thank you. And we did have one other general question that came in that I'd be remiss not to answer. Somebody asked, how's it going? It's going very well, thank you. Um, but I'd like to thank all of our panelists for joining us and thank you to all of our attendees. Uh, just a few quick housekeeping items. When you close this window, you will receive a four question survey that we ask that you take a minute and complete. And again, just a reminder to feel free to go ahead and sign up for more sessions at the same website where you signed up for this session. And about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on that same website. But thank you again to all of our panelists. Uh, thank you to our attendees and good luck in your college search.